Well, it looks like we are finally entering a more balanced real estate market here in Central Florida and probably in many other markets around the nation. And I'm so relieved by this because it was getting extremely tiring, spending most of my time trying to figure out what offer we had to make just to get the seller's attention to even consider what we were offering. In this video, what I want to talk about is sort of the thought process that I go through when I'm trying to help somebody negotiate a real estate deal and what kind of research I do to figure out what you should offer. And that is probably every buyer's number one question. What do you think the seller will take? What should I offer? Well, we know they'll take the full asking price, but Let's see how much we can shave off of that in this video. That's what we're going to talk about. And of course, my number one point I will reveal at the end. So stick around. I have not made a video in like three weeks, and that's because I have just been busy with, in particular, buyers. I have been focusing a lot of my attention on making short videos. So I have been really working on like Instagram, LinkedIn, TikTok, and Facebook. So if you want to find me on one of those channels, I'll put a link below this video so that you can follow me there. The first thing I want to talk about is if you're trying to negotiate in a real estate deal and, and like you're kind of price driven and you it's important to you to get a good deal. The first piece of advice I would give you is to cast a wide net. If you are presenting me with super specific criteria, the number of homes is going to be very, very limited. And basically what you've described is something that a lot of consumers or buyers will want. And so it's going to be more and more difficult to really negotiate something. It's going to be, you know, the, the seller is still going to have a good number of interested buyers. But if you say, hey, I, you know, my time frame is the next three months, I need four bedrooms, or I could do three bedrooms. The wider the net you can cast, the more likely it is that we will be able to find a home that is open to some negotiation. Now let's talk about your financing type. So the general rule of thumb is that cash is king, but that isn't really always true. If you're a cash buyer and let's say you're in a multiple offer situation and there are, you know, two, two finance offers and, and you paying cash, when is cash actually king? Cash is king if there are condition issues with the home that will make it difficult to get financing. If there is the potential for an appraisal issue, that will make cash more attractive because you don't have to have an appraisal. Cash will be more attractive if a quick close is necessary or if there is extra fle flexibility needed by the sellers. So maybe they'll say, we, you know, we need to close sooner, but we might need to close later. It's going to be easier if you're paying cash. You're not going to have to worry about your rate lock expiring. So cash is not always king because ultimately the seller is going to be receiving cash whether the buyer is paying with a mortgage or with cash. If it's purely a numbers game for them, if they just want to get a higher offer, if their house is in a neighborhood where all the houses are pretty much the same, there's not going to be an appraisal issue, it's in good condition, you're not going to win if you're $20,000 less than the finance offers. The third point I want you to think about is that it's all about give and take. So if you're presenting an offer to a seller and you're offering, you know, less than what they're hoping for, think about what you can give them in exchange for that. Um, maybe you can let them stay in the house after closing. Maybe you're giving them a really short inspection period. And by the way, um, in terms of inspection periods, I usually advise people that like really five days is kind of plenty. I know the contract, I think, defaults to 15 days. I don't think I've ever seen anybody actually ask for the full 15 days unless it's, you know, a, a really unique property that needs a lot of inspection. You can get an inspector in there pretty quickly. The only time I generally need more than that is if there's a well on the property and we have to do a water sample or a septic pump out. Sometimes those take more time, but generally five days is enough. So those are some factors that you can play around with, but think about what you can give. It can't be all take in negotiation. That is something important to keep in mind. My fourth point is to take a look at who the seller is. This is a really, really huge one for me, and this is probably the easiest way to find a good deal. 
look at who the seller is. So if you're dealing with something like Open Door, Zillow, Offerpad, those are you know, huge investment companies that have purchased a whole bunch of properties in Central Florida. And for the most part, their only criteria is that they can't lose money when they sell the home. So it does become possible to negotiate repairs very easily. There's no emotion involved with the seller. As long as they're not losing money, they are likely to accept that offer because they just, they just want to move the property. And I can't emphasize enough how important it is that there is no emotion involved when you're dealing with a corporation. Another excellent choice is a home that's owned by a relocation company because the seller is already gone. They have moved on and it isn't necessarily owned by the relocation company, but the relocation company is the signator. That seller has already moved on. They're already living elsewhere. They're probably paying two mortgages. They're going to want to get rid of that house as soon as possible. Some examples of sellers that look like they're going to be really good to work with, but aren't necessarily in my experience. Homes that used to be rental properties. So sometimes when you're in between tenants, a seller will say, just list the house and let's see if we can get this amount for it, but I'm not going to sell it for less. What happens is commonly you'll present your offer. Well, you know, it's been on the market for a while. You're kind of asking a lot. Here's our offer. And the response is, I'll just take it off the market and rent it again. I'm not going to sell it for that amount. This is a huge one for me as I get a lot of buyers who say, well, this house has been on the market for two months. Let's offer something way, way under what they're asking. And sometimes that works, but often it doesn't. They're simply just unrealistic sellers with really high expectations and they're not gonna budge and that's why it's sitting there. So time on the market, while it is, a, it is something to look at, it isn't necessarily an indicator that you're going to get a really, really good deal. My last point and probably the most critical in my eyes is to kind of analyze what the seller's motivation is. So if you can find a home, like in the previous example I mentioned, uh, where the sellers had been transferred, if the sellers have been transferred with work, those are some of the most motivated sellers out there. Um, of course, bank-owned properties or auction properties, it goes without saying, those are usually really, really negotiable properties. It's also important to weed out properties that are not going to be very negotiable. So those might include, well, there's a lot really, situations where people are being forced to sell. They don't really want to sell for whatever reason, you know, a divorce or the ones that are testing the waters. Those are very, very unlikely to negotiate anything with you because they don't really care. If you'll pay my price, I'll sell it. If you won't, I won't. These are not ones that you're going to be able to understand immediately, but very often, like if I as an agent call up the seller's agent and you, you can kind of weed things out in a conversation. If you get a response like, well, I'll see if they'll be willing to let you and your buyer and to look at the house on Wednesday, but you know, they generally really don't want anybody in there until Friday at 5 p.m. or Friday at 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. is the only showing time. There's something going on there <laughs> that they're just not willing to show the property because that is a pretty important step in getting an offer. And don't overlook the fact that just because a home is, is photographed with it being furnished, it could still be a vacant home. Vacant homes are very often the best way to get a good deal. And your realtor should be able to tell you if the home is vacant or not. So just because there's furniture in the photos does not mean that the seller still lives there. The, pho the photos could just be old. Right now, of course, a great way to get a really good deal is to go with new construction. Um, a lot of the fiscal years are ending for some of the builders. So this coming month, September, is a great time to pick up a, a, a brand new property. Um, I've seen as high as $15,000 towards closing costs. They'll buy down your interest rate. Some of them are even under 4% right now, which is great. So there are definitely some deals to be had out there. So happy house hunting. And by the way, if you do want to talk to me, my contact information is also below this video. If you're watching on a cell phone, just click on the title and all of that information will populate.